Did you know that we've already sent fish into space before? Yep, the Mamichog had the honor, if you could call it that, of being the first fish species humans sent into space back in 1973 on the Space Lab mission. But anyway, today we're not talking fish. I'm guessing a lot of you have seen the infamous scene in Gravity where one of the characters tumbles through open space, and it probably made you feel pretty uneasy. What do you think, Sav? Hmm. Oh yeah, so floating like that in space wouldn't really stress you out? A fair point to bring up is that technically, of the 18 astronauts who have died during space flights, only three have died because of space itself. It was back in 1971 on the Soviet Soyuz 11 mission. Long story short, there was a pressurization failure and the crew died of asphyxiation. In most cases, fatal accidents happen during launch or re-entry. That said, drifting alone in open space still sounds, well, terrifying. Mm. Oh yeah, so if we offer you a trip to space right now, you'd take it? Mm -hmm. Well, great, then you're going. To spice things up, though, we're sending you without a spacesuit. Huh? Or much of anything, really. Just your finest pair of briefs. <sighs> no, 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 too late, you're going. But don't worry, it's only two minutes. No big deal, right? Will two tiny minutes in the vacuum of space be enough to take out our dear Gustav? Will he freeze instantly, swell up and explode, or walk away without a scratch? You guys ready? Let's answer today's big question. Two minutes in space without a space suit. What's it like? One second has passed. As you can imagine, a human won't last long in space, so we need to switch to a much shorter time scale. Even in that very first second in the vacuum of space, a lot is already happening. First of all, know that temperature in space varies a lot, mostly depending on whether you're in the sunlight or the shade. Some of you might ask if temperature even makes sense in space at all, and the short answer is yes. On Earth, temperature comes from the jostling of tiny gas molecules. In space, there are far fewer particles, so heat doesn't move through contact the same way, it's mainly transferred by radiation. To give you a rough idea, in space, shaded areas can get to around negative 260 degrees Fahrenheit, while sunlit areas can exceed 250 degrees Fahrenheit. For our dear Gustav, we'll assume he's currently in the shade. Speaking of our test subject, let's check in on him. Hey man, you cold yet? Right, sound doesn't travel in space. Sound waves need matter to move through, solid, liquid, or gas. And in space, there's basically no matter. And that's why we call space a vacuum. Our guinea pig can't hear a thing except the noises inside his own body. Same idea with heat. On Earth, temperature is transferred through contact with matter. Yep, we're still talking about temperature. Think of touching an ice cube or holding your hand a bit too close to a flame. Air is matter as well, and it carries heat. In space, where there's almost no matter, that kind of heat transfer happens very slowly. So your body acts like a little radiator shedding heat by radiation, and that heat just drifts away into space. So yes, you'll feel a bit cold and eventually you would freeze, but that takes a while. Definitely longer than two minutes. After one second, you wouldn't notice any temperature change at all. But anyway, you'd have time to die a hundred different ways in space before you ever actually froze out there anyway. It's now been a whole five seconds in the vacuum of space for our test subject, Gustav. That might not be long, sure, but he already feels a faint tingling on his tongue and eyes. Why? Because the water in his body is starting to boil ever so slightly. This phenomenon is called ebulism. In space, pressure is far lower than on Earth, which also lowers the boiling point of liquids, which also includes the fluids in the human body. In fact, that boiling point drops below human body temperature. In other words, those little prickles Gustav feels is surface moisture on his tongue and eyes boiling off and evaporating. You might be wondering, does blood do the same thing since it's mostly water? No, actually. Ebulism only affects liquids directly exposed to the vacuum of space. Blood circulates inside a closed system, so it's not in contact with space. Gustav's blood would only start to boil if he had an open wound exposed, which thankfully he doesn't. Gustav has been in space for 10 seconds now. I know, still sounds like not much, but for a guinea pig, time is dragging on. As we said earlier, there's basically no matter out there in space. In other words, you can look for oxygen all you want, but you won't find it. So breathing is quite literally impossible. Ah, you took a deep breath just before? Not sure that was a good idea, man. Remember pressure? 
on Earth, it serves many purposes, including keeping gases at a certain volume limit. In space, that external pressure is gone, so gases expand, including the ones inside your body. So if your lungs are full of air before stepping into outer space, the air inside can expand enough to, well, rupture your chest. In other words, jumping into outer space after a deep inhale is basically suicide. So good stuff, are you sure that you held your breath before coming out here? Ah, you didn't. Good. But the other gases in your body can still expand and try to find the nearest exit, including the ones in your intestines. Are you going to implode? No, human tissues are elastic enough to contain gases that can't escape, but you will swell up, literally. It's been 20 seconds of Gustave in this lovely situation, or rather dangerous predicament, so let's see what's happening to our test subject. Weirdly reassuring news, he's not dead. He's in hypoxia. His body has burned through the last of its oxygen, and with no more O2 coming in, the brain basically hits emergency shutdown. He's not dead yet though. Thankfully for him, he's unconscious because what comes next isn't exactly pleasant. Even while out cold, he keeps swelling, and a few big problems are lining up. On the bright side, he did get a brief taste of microgravity or weightlessness before blanking out. Believe it or not, our dear Gustav is still alive and doing relatively okay. In fact, if we brought him back to normal living conditions after 1 minute and 30 seconds in space, he'd likely survive without lasting damage from his little space outing. Unfortunately though, he's got 30 more seconds to go. By the way, some Earth species can actually survive the vacuum of space. Well. I say some, but of the 1,150 species tested in the vacuum of space, only one has truly survived, and not for 3 minutes, but for 10 days. You may have heard of them, you might even have them in your yard without knowing it, tardigrades. They don't look like much at first glance, but your opinion will change once you hear what they can handle. Discovered in 1777, tardigrades have 8 legs and measure between 0.1 and 1.5 millimeters. They can with temperatures from around negative 518 degrees Fahrenheit up to over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. They can tolerate pressures of up to 6,000 bars. In other words, they can dive to an ocean six times deeper than the Mariana Trench, the deepest place on Earth. Tardigrades can even survive nuclear disasters, repairing portions of their DNA damaged by radiation. But most importantly, and I mean most importantly, they can voluntarily enter cryptobiosis which basically makes them functionally immortal while in that state. In simple terms, they curl up, almost completely dehydrate, and secrete a protective substance that preserves their cells and replaces the water in their bodies. The lab record for a tardigrade's cryptobiosis is 8 years, but they can likely maintain it for much longer. Some specimens have been revived after being trapped in polar ice for over 2,000 years. Tardigrades are so insanely tough compared to Earth life that a few scientists have even wondered if they might have come from space in the first place, which would explain why they can survive in outer space. The bottom line though, is Gustave or a tardigrade, two minutes in space would only be a little annoying at most. That said, and sadly for him, Gustave is a human, and humans are not exactly built for space. It's been 1 minute and 50 seconds in space, and things aren't looking good for Gustav. I mean, they had to go south at some point, right? He's suffocating, dealing with ebulism, and swelling. And on top of that, he's drifting all on his own, and as he floats, he's ended up facing the sun. It could sound like good news on paper, maybe it keeps him from freezing, but nope, that's very, very bad news. Sitting in direct sunlight in space is not a good idea. On Earth, our atmosphere and magnetosphere shield us from a lot of the sun's harmful radiation, UV, and more. In space, there's no atmospheric protection and Gustav is exposed directly to those rays. Gustav risks getting a severe sunburn very, very quickly, and that's just the best case scenario. Because without that atmospheric shield, radiation exposure in space also raises the risk of cancers. I mean, at this point though, that's probably the least of his worries. At the two minute mark, there's almost nothing new to report. In space, things either happen very fast or very slow. 
Is Gustav dead? Not yet. He's still in hypoxia, and it would take roughly four to six minutes for asphyxia to be fatal. As for the swelling, remember human skin is elastic enough to contain the gas expansion, and with ebulism, remember that it doesn't affect the blood, and two minutes isn't long enough to dehydrate him completely. So you might be thinking, hey, a quick spin in space without a state suit, as long as it's under two minutes, isn't that bad? Huh. Honestly, that's not true. Even if Gustav doesn't die in two minutes, his body doesn't appreciate the lack of oxygen at all. The lack of oxygen has already caused brain damage, which means potential long-term effects. And when it comes to these kind of things, it's a bit of a lottery as far as how much and where the brain damage is. It's a case-by-case -case basis. Generally, the results can range from behavior changes to a coma, even partial paralysis, heart attacks, and other not-so-fun complications. Contrary to what you might think, a two-minute trip into space without a spacesuit isn't instantly fatal. Well, not on the spot anyway, but between hypoxia-related brain damage and the radiation you've soaked up from the sun, it's definitely not an experience that's good for your health. That said, humans do love an adrenaline rush, skydiving, bungee jumping, even hard drugs. Who knows, maybe one day spending a few seconds in open space will be another extreme thrill ride on the menu.